Praise God, everybody. It's Jennifer. Just wanted to give you an update on the community post about helping people to be matched with housing. Um, I have seen the emails and there, um, of course, there's not going to be a lot of people that are offering places, but there are a number of people that need places and they're not a match yet for the, the people that do have places, but um, there's one possible match. But that's, again, that's the Lord. I just want to update you on that. And if you have uh, a cottage, a, a room, a place in your house, a vacation home or something that an RV, something that's not used that you would want to put in the, um, in the, in the use of a ministry, uh, that you would uh, contact office at blessedbeliever.com and you would uh, I would be able to match you with people that have needs in this time, people that follow this channel, people that love the Lord, people that have been delivered, people that are in the process of deliverance, um, in spiritual warfare, moving toward the things of God, moving into ministry, moving in ministry, okay? So just wanted to... Um, post that. So in case you miss the community post, you can go on my community tab and find that post. But we're trying to match people with housing uh, within the Christian within the Christian um, community here. I wanted to quick tell you about a dream that I had many, many years ago. It's about using your oil. So I had a, I had all this oil. I had all this greenery. I had all these, all this food and all this produce and I'm just kind of carrying it. And I have so much oil that I start pouring it out on a cereal box because I had so much that I just started to do that, but it was wasteful because it was a cereal box. And I thought, well, the cereal box is dry, so I'm going to pour some oil on it, but it wasn't of any use. So I move on a little bit. I had just poured a little bit out. I still had a lot of oil. And I move on towards these people. And it ends up there's about seven or eight managers of a farmer's market. And each of them owns a booth in which they sell and distribute the produce and the oil. And they were waiting for my produce to come in. I was the shipment that they were waiting to come in. But I was just standing there with my all my stuff, not delivering any of it. Um, and this was many years ago. So in the dream, they're, they're all standing there and I couldn't believe they were waiting for me. I didn't have any idea that they were waiting for me, but as soon as I got there, they got, they started to gather all the produce and everything that I had in the oil and everything and start to distribute it at each booth and sell it. Um, so there are sellers, there are people that will distribute your gifts, your talents, your fruit, your uh, the, the things of God that you have, you have developed your gifting and they're waiting for you. So I had to move away from wasting my oil on dry Christians, on dry situations, on dry ministry, things that weren't birthing anything, things that weren't fruitful, things that were supposed to be cereal, but it was just the box. It was the, it was the facade. It was the outside label but it wasn't the actual cereal. And those were people that were in pretense. Those were people that were acting like they were Christian, but they, they were stuck. They wanted the oil. They wanted the light. They were the unwise virgins. They're, they're like, I'm going to take up all this light that I can. But God was showing me that that's wasteful to pour it on them because it's not going to do anybody. It's not even going to help them with their salvation. It's not going to help them with their walk with Christ. They're just eating up the oil. And so I kept moving. He had me, I mean, in the dream, I don't know why I kept moving, but the grace of God allows us to keep moving in, in his mercy. And as I did, there were all these people and these were, this was a very successful farmer's market. They were very adept people. They were, um, they were people that were leaders and I was surprised that they were waiting. So this is a message that God is reminding us, you know, he's having me tell this now after all these years. And I'll, I'll add another dream to this as well, because I had another dream like this. But the concept is there's a lot of gifts and things that you have 
and talents and things. And of course, the enemy is going to want to try to get you stagnated in where you are. So you're pouring out into the situation that he didn't call you to. He called you to this whole different world, this whole community of people that you had no idea existed. He called you to leaders. He called you to to those that would feed the flock, to feed those that would feed the flock. So this is for a lot of you. Um, this is the walk of, of the, the leaders in the faith. Um, you, he, the walking the faith causes you to be a leader and to lead others. And sometimes you're going to be leading leaders and you have a lot to give. And if you have talents, if you, if you claim to know a lot, if you claim to have a lot, then there should be a lot of fruit. There should be a lot happening. Um, not just a little. So he had, he does have that expectation. So the other dream, again, it was a, a being undermined uh, by the person that was false. So in this dream, I, it was night and I was carrying a big batch of really gourmet hot food. So this is like pork loin and gravy and mashed potatoes and the real, like as, 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 uh, I'm just hearing guilty, like the guilty rich food as you can get. And I was carrying it, but I didn't, I had so much of it. I had like almost endless portions of it, but I wasn't necessarily delivering it anywhere. It was just dark. And I was walking down the street and up comes this dog and this dog starts to cry and say, I've been abandoned. Nobody loves me. Um, I'm locked out. It was sort of like out, you know, outside on the street. And so I offered it some of my gourmet food and it just went and it ran all over it. It just stepped on it all. It ruined it. And it was just a, a portion of it again, but I was just thinking, you know, here, this dog has this opportunity to eat and it doesn't eat. It tramples because that is the religious spirit. That's the dog represents the religious spirit. So the religious spirit was trying to working through a person and trying to get attention and trying to self seek and trying to manipulate so that it could just trample on the things of God, because that's what it wants to do. And it's the spirit of Leviathan. So you will always have Leviathan. You will always have Leviathan in your walk because it's Satan. So the spirit of Antichrist is going to be after God's people, no matter what. So you're always going to be facing this spirit and it's going to come in different ways and it's going to try to cause you to get distracted and get away from delivering your gifts, your talents, your fruit, your produce to where he had uh, written for you. Remember, our goal is to get to where what he wrote. So we have to discover what he wrote. We don't know. We have to keep following him in faith and letting go of everything that's not what he wrote, knowing what He's telling us not to do, and it's a lot. The faith walk is a lot of knowing what not to do, and that often pushes us because it's the narrow path that leads to life. The narrow path is because it's pressed, and it's pressed because we're being told what not to do, or we're being extracted from the things that don't fit anymore, and we're going down that narrow narrow channel that eventually it's a straight that opens up. That's why it's called a straight because it's named after the straight and narrow, it's named after the straight path, the pressed path, the biblical way, the biblical faith. So I just wanted to step in and say hello and let you know that this is the word of the Lord for today about not wasting your fruit, your oil, you're not giving it to these old things. If you're on the narrow path, you're cutting away, you're you're moving away from, you're doing a lot of action of of a lot of your movement is the no. A lot of your defining what the yes is, is because you're following the no and the no and the no and the no, and you don't know what the yes is. And you're going to be surprised with what the yes is, the yes meaning what he wrote for you before the foundations of the earth. Sometimes that's the last thing that you find out. You find it out at the end when you come face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ, when you're in his midst, when he's in you and you're in him. In that point, you start to get clarity on who you are and you need to know who you are in order to even recognize and identify the the um the outcome the thing that he wrote for you because it's going to be foreign so um let him continue to push you through the nose 
that the, the this doesn't fit anymore. I don't fit here anymore. This isn't God's will for me. The word says that I shouldn't do this. The word shows me that I should be doing this. That's the straight and narrow. And you're, and with that process, your fruit is growing. Your produce is forming. Your oil is filling your temple so that you can be a wise virgin and not an unwise virgin when the time comes that Jesus Jesus comes in that you get your whole body filled with light. And that's a whole other teaching, a whole other video. But once he comes, that door shuts and it's either outer darkness or light because the world's going to get dark. And when, when Jesus comes with his light, when he comes with his transfiguration, when he comes with his glory, it's going to enter the temple of those that have the oil and the other ones won't have the light in their temple. And there, that's outer darkness. The world is going to be dark. They're going to suffer and search for the word of God, and they're not going to find it. The only people that have it are the ones that are filled with that light. Uh, those are the wise virgins. Everybody else is in outer darkness, and there's not going to be another choice. Then they're just going to the Christians that don't have the light are going to have to live in the outer darkness with the pagans, with the unbelievers. They're going to have to suffer through those things because they didn't allow themselves to be filled with that that moment they weren't looking for the lord and his coming ready with this oil so there's so much to say in that it's such an urgent time uh are we paying attention are we urge are we moving in urgency are we thinking and sleeping in urgency are we asking the lord for dreams that say tell me what's going on what's coming tell me what i urgently need to do uh, we need to ask him. He's going to talk. He's going to start talk, talking to us when we ask him to, and we listen, and we write it down, and we follow him, and we do what he says to do, and we we acknowledge what he tells us, even if we don't see it or if we think it's strange. Uh, we just stay with the word of God doesn't match the word, and continue on and let him talk to us the next day and the next. So God bless you. I pray the power of God on you. I pray that you feel the warmth and the the um, I'm just hearing the covenant of peace that you feel the covenant of peace on your life, and that you you continue to be bridled and prepared for the things that are yet ahead. It's a glorious time. It's a time of squeezing. It's a time of regeneration. It's a time of transfiguration. It's a time of maturing. It's a time of moving from one season to another. So let's do it together. Let's continue on in it. I pray the Lord blesses you, opens your eyes, keeps you in repentance, and keeps you sincere in the things of God, even where you're, you might be surrounded with those who are not. Love one another, continue to love, and to be unified in the spirit and the bond of peace with the people of God that follow his will. God bless you. I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.